Today I'm trying out a uh, film I've never used before. It's Kodak Pro Image 100. Um, it's a pretty new film over here in the UK. It's been in the US for quite a while, I believe. Uh, I picked up a five pack from Analog One Land. Cost me about 24 pounds, super reasonable film. I'm gonna take it out on my Olympus 35RC and see what I think. Most of what I've heard about this film really kind of focuses on its uh, bright, vibrant colours, its fine grain and its good, strong, punchy contrast. Um, so I'm having a wander around today, I decided to stick around the kind of suburban areas of London um, because I think for kind of more vibrant films, more bright films, you get a lot of colour from kind of cars to flowers, plants, buildings. The light's really nice today as well, um, so hopefully we'll get some interesting results from it. An interesting thing worth noting about this film is Kodak say uh, it can be stored at room temperature even in kind of hot humid climates. So if you live somewhere that's hot and humid or you're traveling somewhere that is or you don't have a fridge to keep your film in, it's definitely something to keep in mind about this stock. It's worth noting that people talk about this, these vibrant colours and this high contrast um, because it's very different to what I normally use Kodak films for. Um, I tend to lean towards portrait which is a lot more pastel tones, it's a lot softer, it's a lot lower contrast. Um, so this is going to be very different to what I'm used to shooting but I'm a strong kind of believer in the right film for the right situation so I'm not going to say that this is a film I would never shoot because I like portrait. Um, I'm just going to try and find where it kind of shines, what colours work with it, what uh, kind of scenes it really lends itself towards, which is why I'm just wandering around today and snapping what I see to get a wide range of results and a wide range of different scenarios that it can be used in. So when I was out shooting today, I meet it a little bit differently to how I normally do. Um, generally, if I'm out shooting something like Portra, I'll intentionally overexpose my film. So if I'm shooting portrait 400, I'll normally set my handheld light meter to 320 ISO and then meter for the shadows. Reason for this is I know that the shadows are going to be correctly exposed and portrait really handles overexposure well, so I know I'm never going to lose that detail in the highlights. This film being a bit higher contrast and a bit more punchy colours, um, in my head I'm thinking it's going to be a bit more similar to Ektar, which from my experience really doesn't like being overexposed. So for these images, I'm metering at box speed at 100 ISO and I'm metering roughly for the midtones. So for this first test, I want to get the exposure pretty much as bang on as I can. And then from there I can start experimenting with pushing, pulling, overexposing, underexposing, and seeing the kind of the exposure latitude that this film does have. Overall I'm happy with this film, I don't think for me it's ever going to replace Portra, but particularly for the price and with these more punchy colours, this kind of high contrast look that it has, it's something that I will probably keep around to put through point and shoot cameras or to put through my kind of smaller pocket sized cameras when I'm walking around day to day. Um, particularly the fact that it fares well with humidity, with heat and with not being stored quite as delicately as other films, it's the sort of thing I'll go travelling with or I'll take to festivals or I'll chuck a roll in my bag and always have it there in case I need it. Um, so I'll definitely be buying more and I recommend if, if you're into shooting 35 and you like bright colours, you like high contrast or you just want something new to try, definitely go and grab some of this film. <laughs>